Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar, uh, Change Gear Change Manager webinar. This is the second in our series of follow up to uh, some of you that might have come along to see us at the SIT show uh, at the beginning of this month. Um, for some of you, this will be the first webinar you're attending, so welcome to that. Uh, we've got a mixture of attendees here, some of them are folks who know us and, and some who are new to this. So uh, just to introduce myself to you, my name is David Silsby. I'm the Sales Director at Networks Utilities. And uh, we're joined today by Juan Ramirez, um, who is an ITIL certified and change gear engineer from the publishers of Change Gear who are soft, some of you software. We also had on the call with us uh, Steve Peterson, who is the International Channel Manager for Sundry Software, and we might invite him to speak as the session goes on. Um, so we have got you all in listen-only mode at the moment. Uh, if you have any questions, please do use the question uh, box that comes with the GoToWebinar session. You can uh, type your question and, and send it over to us, and we'll try and respond to that at the end of this session. We're going to try and keep this session uh, short and succinct, um, and, and hopefully it's going to be relevant to you. Um, so just uh, to sort of introduce the agenda for today, just going to do uh, one brief slide to introduce you to Network Utilities. We're then going to do a, an introduction to Sunview software and the actual Change Gear product range. And then specifically talk about the change manager solution. Um, we'll open that up to some questions at the end and then close. So just by way of introduction to you of network utilities, those of you who, who don't know us, we're an IT solution provider that have been working in the UK for the last 23 years. We work in a number of areas, um, including networking, security, but also IT service management, which is an area that we've been involved in since uh, 1993. Um, we've got currently just over 300 customers uh, throughout the UK, people from all market sectors. The kind of solutions we provide tend to address the issues that anyone who invests in technology has within their business. Um, we, um, as you can see there, we are an ISO 9001 and also ISO 27001 registered organization and certified. Um, for those that know what that means, it means we take quality assurance seriously and also security of the data that we manage uh, within our business. Um, I mentioned that we, uh, the types of solutions that we provide, specifically in the area of IT service management, what we're trying to do is provide technologies that enable our customers improve the overall efficiency of managing IT within their organization. Things that enable automa automation and also optimizing of the operations within IT support departments. For those include traditional help desk or service desk tools, change management solutions, and remote management technologies as well. We uh, are a systems integrator, so none of the technology we provide is our own. Uh, we work with a number of best of breed vendors, and we, of course, ensure that we are uh, highly technically accredited in all of those areas. One of those vendors that I'd like to introduce you today is our partner, Sunview Software. Um, uh, some of you software are a privately owned software corporation headquartered in Tampa, Florida. Um, if you ever get the chance to go there, beautiful location. Um, and the weather's a lot better than it is over here at the moment. Um, so some of you have been around for uh, since 2003 as an organization, and they um, currently have over 400 customers globally using the Change Gear platform. A um, couple of things just to uh, perhaps give some credibility to some of you. Uh, they're recognized by a number of the leading analyst organizations as industry leading provider of service desks and specifically change in configuration management technologies as well. Um, 
the core product from Sunview is called Change Gear. Um, it's a fully integrated service desk platform that covers all of the ITIL disciplines that you'd expect. Um, so it has all the enterprise features you'd expect in a service management tool, but without the uh, enterprise type technology price. Um, the purpose of Change Gear really is to help organizations to decrease or reduce the costs that are usually related to service management within their business. And there's a number of flexible licensing options, whether it be on-premise, cloud, or subscription licensing. Um, and I think one of the key advantages that we see with Change Gear over some of the other solutions that are out there is the technology is very quick to implement and configure. Um, as it is one single integrated platform that is easily scalable across organizations of all size, which means that you can take on the basic modules, for example, like incident management um, and change management, um, and then you can add other features. So you could add problem management, uh, scale up to uh, service delivery, um, service catalog, uh, and integrated tools like CMDB, etc. The product itself is designed to be very flexible, and that means uh, you can customize it to your requirements. Uh, and again, one of the advantages is that we provide the tool so that you as the end user can do that customization with easy to use module workflow editors and, and powerful business rules configuration tools behind the scenes. That means that you don't have to come to organizations like us every time you want to update or customize your platform. You can do that yourself. That's not to say that all customers do that. A lot of them still come to us, uh, but uh, it's available for you to do that. So um, specifically what we're talking about today is the Change Gear Change Manager platform. Um, and you can, I guess the, the name of the key core product Change Gear gives away where our, 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 our roots come from. Change management has always been at the very core of what we do. Um, and the change, new Change Manager product has specifically been designed in um, consultation with people like Gartner and some of the other industry analysts who have recognized a need for a dedicated change management tool that can address the, uh, the world of agile IT as it's affecting us now. Um, the traditional ITIL type change or the waterfall type development that we uh, have been used to has, has, has changed, evolved, um, and the need to uh, add new technologies, new applications, new features rapidly into a business has uh, brought on the agile model. And um, so change gear as a change manager has specifically been designed to support traditional change traditional item type change, business change, and also um, agile change within the business. And, and that's what we call this multiple change mode. As soon as you create a change ticket within Change Manager, one of the first things it will ask you is, is this an item type change? Is it a business change? Or is it a DevOps type agile change? Um, behind the scenes, the, you've got highly configurable workflows. I already made mention of those. These are customizable, but you get them out the box that can be used immediately. Uh, I mentioned already there that we've got the customizable forms and templates. And the whole goal of Change Manager is to help organizations embrace this concept of multimodal or bimodal change, whether you doing traditional ITIL type change or DevOps change, but also meet the requirements for compliance. Um, and that's been, I guess, one of the hindrances to agile development in that often the traditional change going through cabs, et cetera, um, can, can hold up the development and, and hence the speed of getting this technology to market and can actually have an impact on businesses' bottom line. So we've developed this new version of Change Manager to specifically support agile uh, development and agile change with the business so that it doesn't hold up and can integrate with, with back-end processes and technologies. 
So <clears throat> that brings me on to just some of the core features that you're going to see today. Uh, and again, we're doing a very high level demo. And if anyone wants to see more detail, we'll be happy to talk to you afterwards to either come and see you or do a more detailed presentation over a, a go to meeting, etc. Some of the key features that you're going to see within uh, Change Gear is we have an integrated change calendar. This is publishable to the business and all that are involved in the change um, process can see that, but it will basically give a full picture of changes that are happening across the organization or with, by department or depending on your security view and what you're able to see. But you can then start to plan changes so that they have less impact on other changes that are going on within the business. It has full log tracking, and this is crucial to compliance, as you're aware. Um, being able to keep track of all the changes, who's been assigned the task, who's completed them, and any associated input from third-party applications or logs that will be tracked against that change so that you can actually have a full audit trail to prove compliance or go back and make changes to the change processes along the way. Um, so we have the concept within ChangeGear also of approvals, um, and that's an automated process. So traditionally with an ITIL type change, you can have um, owners to uh, configuration items assigned, whether they be business owners, technical owners, or departmental owners. And, and the approval process when a change a hits or impacts a resource can automatically be triggered via an, an email to go out to the, um, the relevant approver or the group of approvers. Um, now, the great thing within the new change manager product is that we can actually have pre-authorized approvals. And this is one of the things that can help speed up agile development. Um, there's also a full suite of management tools which have uh, a management dashboard to see the status of change within the business, um, the number of open uh, change requests, uh, trends within periods of time, and also we have something called Workspace which is great for individual users within uh, that are using Change Gear because they can actually open up their individual workspace and see all tickets or tasks assigned to them or their team and the status of them specifically. Uh, the last item we have there on the right talks about the business policy automation that is built into Change Gear. This is a key feature that helps uh, as I mentioned, automate some of the back-end processes, whether these are based on certain conditions or certain triggers from third-party applications. Anything can be triggered off then according to the activity. Uh, Change Gear will trigger off um, automated processes and notifications within the, the, the platform. So, um, with that, I'm hoping that we've got Juan on the line and, um, and that we're ready to dive across to the demo. So, Juan, are you with us? Yes, I am. Wonderful. Thank you. I'm just going to um, change presenter over to you. Great. And please uh, let me know when you can see my screen. Okay, I can see that now. Thank you. All right, great. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm going to take you through a high-level overview of change. And, um, you know, if you have any questions at the end, we're going to have some time for that. Um, but change here is a web-based application. You know, all of your users will be accessing, you know, the different interface through a web browser. Uh, we have Active Directory authentication. Uh, there is a SQL Server database. So a very scalable solution. Now, we're going to provide different interfaces based on the different roles within your change process, the different stakeholders. We have the traditional grid-based interface for your staff to track and work uh, the items and get ad hoc reporting. We have full dashboards and, uh, and flexible uh, KPIs and metrics so your management can get the information that they need at the right time. We provide workspace views so your change managers can have access to change calendar and as well as 
you know, uh, cap meeting notes uh, in the case they're, they're, they're doing cap meetings. And also, if you want to open your change process for your business, we provide a yet, uh, you know, robust and simple self-service portal. So those business users can go in, submit change requests, uh, see the status of those, and approve any change requests that they have to approve, right? Some of the business owners, uh, you know, on your organization may be um, using this self-service portal to go in and approve their changes. Now, let me close out some of those interfaces, then I'm going to take you through, you know, the change management module. So, navigation in change here is very easy. There's a menu button here on the left upper side will give access to different modules within the solution. All of the modules have the same look and feel, uh, grid-based interface in the main canvas, and there's views on the left-hand side that the user can select to display within the grid-based report. Now, he can interact with any of those tickets. He can get different views depending on different criteria uh, that is based, right, that is set up by you. You have full access of, you know, managing what information, what requests for changes would you like to see within those views. All of the information is available for exporting in different formats, emailing, a configure, a saving the fields using drag and drop and eating, I'm sorry, even saving as new views for future use. Uh, Multi-select actions are available, so you can select tickets <clears throat> and multi-select, uh, you know, and multi-action those tickets depending on, you know, different conditions or things that you may need. Now, within Change Care, we allow or we have the functionality what we call multi-mode change, and that allows you to define different modes of change or different processes that you want to track your changes. You may have, you know, ITIL-based changes. We are ITIL-based solutions, so we include ITIL-based uh, processes. Now, you may have uh, some some processes uh, more of a of a development side on an automated fashion, where you are tracking changes that might be happening, you know, on an agile fashion. Uh, business type of changes and other changes that you would like to track. I. Uh, any custom process that you would like to set up, uh, you're welcome to, you know, develop those within the ChangeCare platform. So out of the box, we include, you know, the first three, and this is something that I added as an example of adding a custom uh, process mode. All of those processes may have a different form. So if I select an ITIL base type of process, I get a full ITIL base form with best practices built in. Now, I may select the option of selecting a business type of uh, request and the process or the form is a little bit different, right? It's less ITIL, you know, it's more business side, uh, less ITIL methodology. And everything is start with the creation of a change. And I'm not going to create a change, but I'm going to you know, select one that is already open to see some of the information that we capture. This is an app, sorry. This is an ITIL based change. So we're looking at some information. We're going to do a server upgrade. The uh, information uh, in red, which is required. You know, information regarding profiles are always available for, uh, you know, a, a, a have profile information, you know, who's requesting those changes. Change type will track, you know, the type of changes that you're working with, you know, uh, the things that you're, uh, you're going to be changing and tracking, and it's all, all of those fields are configurable. Now, we have a spe special fields that I left a blank on purpose, so we, I can show you the power of using change with our configuration management database. So if you're making a change to a server, you can relate that server 
within your impact resource. And once you do that, you're going to automatically you know, bring what things may be impacted. So notice how now my impacted business services has been out of field by our solution, telling you, hey, the email service is going to be impacted, and how many impacted users are or groups uh, within that change. Now you have available information so you can actually see a visual map or a visual representation on why that change it's uh, it, it's why you're affecting the email services. So I can see exactly that that services is being hosted in that particular server. As you're making changes upstream, you always can see downstream the things that might be affected on a particular change. So just information at your fingertips so you can use that information you know, and take better decisions. Now you may be looking at this and you may want to increase the impact or have a different uh, you know, approvers based on that impact. Now user, oh, sorry, information contained on that CMDB can be used within the approval phase. So now I can utilize owners or business owners of that particular resources, impacted or impact resource as people you know that are going to be requiring to change. So let's go through the change process. Notice that there's actions on the top of the form and there's a timeline or a process available for you to see exactly what's going to happen within the change. So as you take actions, you can capture exactly everything that you are modifying, you can make comments, and automatically send that process through the approval or the automated approvals. Now email notifications is some, uh, we, oh, sorry, uh, we actually have an approval rule for Jotec, so it's a pre-approved user. So that's the power of pre-authorized users. As we create those requests, we can kind of pre-authorize them. Now let me go ahead and select another one because I want to take it through the approval process. I got this information here. I'm going to change a request or two and submit that for approval. Hopefully this one will stop at the approval state and we can show you the automated approvals. Uh, sorry about that, submit for approval. Now as we uh, submit those changes for approval, there's different ways that your change or your cap, your change approval may uh, approve those changes and I'm going to have to do something here quick. All right, different user, as that's is an authorized user. So I'm going to quick uh, build a quick change and submit that for approval. I'm going to change standard change, change type, hardware, impact, urgency, priority, due date, today. Right, I got everything required. Notice how now 
that change brought out more business services and impacted users and groups. I am going to submit this for approval. Let's go ahead and start that approval process. So as I mentioned, email, automated emails are going to go out and uh, uh, be sent out. Uh, I'm sorry about that. I, uh, I have some business rules set up for the changes and it's causing me that approval to stop in there. Uh, anyway, um, if there's something that we need to approve on a change, there's an approval phase that you can just click in or approval action. The approvers will be notified. So in this case, uh, you know, in this case, I, I'm the one who needs to approve, so I can go in and approve that change just by clicking on one of those actions. Email notifications <clears throat> that are going to be sent out. will have a an action that you can select in order to, in, the, in this case, take one of those actions. Uh, accept, reject, whatever the action might be at that particular time within the process. So the user only needs to reply to that change and select one of the actions, either approve, reject, or in this case, accept or whatever action he would like to execute within the change request. Now we have a couple of views that I want to show you <clears throat> that allows your change approval board to work on the changes. So if you are a CAP member or you have a specific role of change manager, these two little icons or, or many options are going to show you within your workspace. And this will show you, or this have the ability to open up a change calendar where you can see the changes that are going to be happening on particular days. Uh, you can move around the calendar, you can drill down on, on specific dates and get a timeline on all those changes. Now, those changes can be selected by different categorizations. So you can see by impact or urgency. You can use due dates if you want, or even shows close tickets and what location you would like to select. So if you have multiple locations, we can have different calendars for those. Now you may be having meet a, you know meetings where you go through changes. Now we select a view, or we have a view where you can have all of your changes that require review, and you can mark those for review just by right-clicking on those items. And then you can use uh, the meeting notes uh, to track you know, different things. You can take these meetings and edit them, but once you save them, you can email them out to the users within your change management group. Right? Maybe somebody's taking notes, the things that you did, now you may want to send those notes to your cab. As we work with items, you're going to be working with this grid-based interface. And notice how I can quickly you know, sort just by clicking on the column. I can select the little funnel on the right-hand side, and I can see all the values available on that particular column, and I can select the ones I want to show, right, or not, right? If you want to unselect, just assign. Right? You can get those quickly. Now, uh, you can always type on any of the columns. You can type whatever you are looking for right? and get that data. You notice that REST is showing as a contains value, but if you click on that phone again, you can say, well, show me everything that begins with that keyword or that end with. So you can change the way you're searching and the way that you want to filter the information on those views. Now there's also the ability for sorry, dragging and dropping. So you can drag and drop these values and get different 
or they get different groupings on those views. So quickly you can build any view just by you know, manipulating the information on the screen. For example, if I'm looking at all tickets, I want to build a new, for a new request. I want to see the owners of the tickets and who's working on those. And notice that I don't have that data here. So what do I do? I click Manage View, Show High Columns, and then I can select Assign To, or maybe better, who the owner is of the ticket. Maybe I passed it. Owner. And you drag and drop it into the view. Now you have an owner. I don't have a lot of data here, but there's some owners there. Perfect. Now, um, as you work on this view, you may want to move things out of the view. And maybe I would just want to do email. Perfect. So now I can save this view and have it click Save. And now I have a new view available within my interface that I can access at any time. I can export. I can delete it because it's my current view is my views I'm working on those items. So now ownership views are available. So my views will represent things that regarding Joe Manager as a user, things that he requested or things that are assigned to him, his own personal views as well. Team views represent uh, team-based tickets, tickets that are owned by teams that you're a member of. You can be a member of one or more teams and you can see those requests here. If you're also a team manager or team owner, you will navigate within your team views to see you know, tickets assigned to your teams. And then you have global views like, you know, that those are things that you may have privileges to see. Open, do today, close, things that require approval, you have that option of see anything ticket based on your privileges. Now as we work with tickets, Right? You're going to have certain information to capture and things that you're going to be able to do within the, ch the change itself. Anything that is required will be in red. Information is provided automatically to track alternative solutions, you know, plan information, as well as actual information. The implementation tab allows change managers or change, you know, requesters of change, you know, the, the, the owners of the change to create activities that you can track. Those activities will roll up value, actual values. So now you can compare with the things that you analyze and decide that you are, it's going to take you. So you said that it's going to take 28 hours. This is your actuals now that you can compare with. Notice that we have cost and labor cost, so you can really have or calculate the actual cost of a change. Now those activities can be created, as I mentioned, manually. So somebody's gonna, you know, do the impact assessment. As I track those activities and close them out, you know, notice that there's a process as well. So as I create those activities, what we're going to do is roll up all of those values. So now at the end of the day, you can present the information and reports around cost, around effort, around duration. Now we have also a related items view, so we have the ability to relate any change to any change, a parent type uh, child relationship where a change can contain or be related to other changes. These are great for kind of release processes where a release kind of component may contain multiple RFCs related to that. There is an announcement calendar which is different than the change calendar, but the announcement can be used to announce to your 
impacted users and groups, to the people that are going to be impacted by those change to your end user community, you can go ahead and announce right from the change module, either manually or automatically, and have those announcements show within the self-service portal. So as you're making changes, as you're creating those announcements, you will have them available for your end users to see. So the ability to be proactive to, you know, make sure that you're, you know, keeping your impacted users and groups informed of all of your changes. Now, as you may move throughout your deployment of that particular change, you're going to be able to capture information about QA, comments, and test cases, and test results. So all of those links will allow you to attach any document to any change request. So documents could be added by attaching a file or by linking to a URL. Right? So you can have a wiki where you're storing your documents and you can link to those, have those available within the change. Service level agreement can be defined so you can track, you know, your service level agreements of change with your, you know, different groups or maybe your customers and the full audit trail will, is provided so you can show exactly, you know, all of the actions within the change. What has happened? Who has action? What are the fields that were changed and the before and after values? So now as you're tracking your changes, as you're working all of the changes throughout the change management process, you're going to be able to do some reporting. Now I show you that with the ad hoc report and the views, you can get anything that you would like to see in an ad hoc fashion where you can print it out. Now there's a reports module available as well, so you can build your own reports. So you have the ability to build different types of reports or use the, our out-of-the-box reports that we provide. These are some of the examples of the things that we provide, tables and graphical reports available for you. Now you can take any of those reports, graphical reports I mean, and you can place them into a dashboard where you can display the information that, it's, that you're interested in. Right? Notice that this particular user, Joe Manager, has you know a few graphs available where he has you know he wants to keep track of emergency changes and close and uh, all of open tickets or changes, right? But now the difference within this dashboard and other dashboards is that it's very easy to use. Notice how I can drag and things around and I can rearrange and create dashboards very easily. But you can also refresh the data and show exactly the values that you're interested in. So we're looking at the current month of data. I want to see last month. Notice how the things change automatically. Numbers may change. Let me see the last six months, how, what we're doing. All right? Notice how my values change. All of those graphs or numbers are available for drill down. So you can see the 300 and, I'm sorry, the 330 items that compose that scorecard. And you can always expand any view or any widget and see information based on what you would like to see. Now we provide a couple of dashboards that are available out of the box so you can assign those to your roles. So these are persona-based dashboards, so you can have, you know, your IT management role have a specific dashboard, your IT staff have another dashboard, and you can publish out those dashboards very easily. As an administrator, as somebody has, who has access to do that, you can make your changes to your dashboard, you can define your metrics, and then you can publish that out to the rest of the uh, IT population. Now all of the users have the ability, if, you, if they're given to the ability to take this bad dashboard and make it their own. You know, start with the dashboard, now I make changes to it, 
maybe I want to add widgets and make my own dashboard. Uh, the executive is a special dashboard that you can assign to your site users or your business users. They do not require a license. So your executives can have access to metrics without having to consume a license. Now the other component that I want to talk about is the configuration management database and this is where your repository of you know your configuration items, the things that you want to track that you're going to be making changes to. Could be physical assets, could be uh, network it, net, networking equipment, you know, your, every, anything that is connected to a network, we can go out and discover. Anything that is not or that is a logical asset can be manually or can be imported, can be manually entered or imported through an import utility that we provide. So the ability to, to track different things makes change gear you know, a nice or, or makes the CNDB great to work with along the change process. So as you're tracking your different, you know, computers, servers, let me bring out a, you know, machines, you can track information regarding that machine, including configuration information, and then scan history. Show me the details of the scan after seeing the differences. So let me open up a, uh, a different machine that I have here, CG demo. All right. <clears throat> Procurement information can be tracked. Usage information can be set. Owners, technology owners, business owners. And then service history can be pulled out and have all your changes available. So if you make changes to this asset, you can automatically, right from the system, build out a change that is related to that item and track it within here. Now all of your resources, as I mentioned, can contain relationships. So as you work your changes and as you are working on those items, you can always see a representation of, you know, what are the uh, things that are going to be showing downstream and I have a, I don't have anything here, sorry. There we go. I'll notice that that particular router is connecting all of those computers. So I make a change here, now all of those computers may not have access out to the corporate network. It gives you the power of changing, the power of the configuration management database. As I mentioned, it doesn't have to be anything physical. It could be business services, it could be documents, it could be facility items. It could be anything that you would want to track within the CMDB along with change makes for great, uh, you know, great use of best practices within ch the change management discipline. So David, uh, I'm going to kick it back to you for questions. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks very much for that, that presentation. I'll just uh, bring myself back here. There we go. So, um, we're at the final slide, folks, you'll be pleased to hear. A um, couple of questions have come in already, but if anyone else wants to fire a question, again, if you look at the uh, GoToMeeting or GoToWebinar panel down the bottom, there's a questions uh, area. Click on that, you can enter a question in that. Um, so if I may, uh, Brian, um, just ask you one of the first questions that's, that's come in. Uh, um, question is, how easy is it to integrate change gear with uh, my DevOps tools? Yes, we do provide a uh, 
a REST API, RESTful API. Yeah. Uh, so using uh, that API, you can quickly, you know, uh, build your integrations uh, to change gear. You know, we provide all, you know, major uh, actions, you know, create tickets, update tickets, retrieve items, uh, all the major operations uh, are available through that REST API, so you can talk into change gear from your DevOps tool. You may have your uh, your repository, uh, your source code repository, create uh, change logs in change gear as you're checking in or committing your your code into the repository, as well as as you're moving items throughout your DevOps chain tool chain set. I'm sorry. Okay. Are there any specific tools that you already have integrations with? Uh, we have something with TFS, uh, and I believe we have uh, done other things like with Puppet, and, um, but um, it's mostly open for your developers to, to kind of write into change here. Super, thank you. Um, and um, uh, another question here, I guess I can can answer that. This one is is how is Change Gear license or Change Manager license? So uh, I mentioned uh, earlier in my slides that we have very flexible licensing options. Um, Change Manager in particular um, is mostly licensed as an on-premise solution, but it's uh, licensed as a subscription model. So um, it can still be done as an OPEX cost within the business. Um, now, how do we do that? Well, there's a core core um, product that you license. For change here, you would choose the, the core product that you want. So if you want the IT service management suite, you would buy that suite. Or if you just wanted the um, uh, help desk manager which is a cut down just incident management tool or if you want change manager you license the the core module that you want and then we license what we call uh, named or concurrent users and there's also what we call a site license so the site license comes uh, with whatever module you buy it gives you the ability to open up the portal um, to everyone within your business so you don't need a license of course you still need to sign on and we have that through active directory integration or single sign-on um, but there, there's no need to buy licenses for all the end users or the requesters uh, the people who are actually managing either the, the ticket process or the, the change request process would be people that need to actually dive in and edit those forms or or look at the all, all the views that were that demonstrated. Um, and those would be our licensed users. And you can either have named users within the product or concurrent users. Um, of course, it depends on the contention ratio that you're looking at on the concurrent versus names depend which ones will give you the best um, cost of efficiency for your business so we can talk through those if anyone's got more specific requirements there um, and that's about it for the questions that have come in so um, thanks again, folks, for your time today. Thanks for joining us. We will be um, posting on our video blog the uh, recording of this. So if you want to share this with any of your colleagues, um, we'll send you the link to that. Um, uh, thanks again to Hugh Juan for your time on the demo. And we'll look forward to seeing you all uh, at our next web event. Thank you.